Good afternoon, everybody, and, and welcome. This is a great day for Mount Sinai and, of course, for our new endowed chair recipients. We're here to celebrate your work, your commitment to Mount Sinai, and your passion. Today, we can reflect on the achievements of these accomplished people, but I don't want to do that. I want to look ahead. I want to look to the future. Because for the scientists here, there will be a time when they'll leave their laboratories. There'll be a time when they no longer take care of patients for the clinicians. And I want to ask them, when they leave, what will they leave behind? What I mean is, how will they be remembered in this institution and among your colleagues, both here at Mount Sinai and away from Mount Sinai? To put it in almost spiritual terms, I want to ask, what will be your afterlife? What will you leave behind after you leave Mount Sinai? What will be your legacy to this institution, an institution that began well before any of us were born and will carry on long after any of us are here? As elite members of Mount Sinai's faculty, you have a responsibility that comes with being a part of a historically great institution. And that's the preservation of our core values. We all want breakthrough cures. We all want to develop new therapeutics. We all want to extend lives. In the process of aiming for that greatness, though, we can't lose sight of who we are and our moral compass that is embedded in Mount Sinai. We must preserve the values that have been a part of our institution for 165 years, a part of our DNA, a part of us that a long, long time ago said, no matter who, what people's race, what people's religion, what people's national origin, or even their ability to pay, our doors are open to everyone. Now, I didn't necessarily appreciate that 50 years ago when I came to Mount Sinai as a medical student. I came to be a physician scientist. And to my good fortune, this place believed in me and laid the foundation for my career. But the longer I've been here, the more I realized that my job wasn't just being a physician scientist. It was not just writing papers. It was not just getting millions of dollars of grants. It was about what would be left behind, what was lasting. My job was to be a steward of this institution, of its legacy and its heritage. That was my responsibility, and now it's yours. Mount Sinai's values haven't been sustained by a stroke of luck. They've been endured because people in leadership positions like you make a conscious effort to support those values. For clinicians, they are values like serving everyone who walks through our doors regardless of their ability to pay or what insurance they may carry. It means really putting patients first. For scientists, they are values like collaborating, like breaking down walls between disciplines, like discouraging, discouraging rivalries between laboratories, like making a real difference in curing disease. For over 165 years, our institution stood for our patients and for scientific innovation. Today, the people in this room have to make sure that that continues for the next 165 years. That's the legacy of Mount Sinai, it, what we must keep alive. Now, many of you know that when Dennis Charney speaks, he often quotes Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> now, I know, this, I, I know the Springsteen lyrics, and I'm not gonna quote from Bruce, but I will quote from an idol of mine, which was Robert Kennedy, who said at many, many times, many speeches, and this really applies to the points that I want to make. He said, every generation inherits a world it never made. And as it does so, it automatically becomes the trustee of that world for those who come after. The trustee of that world for those who come after. And that is true for us. So imagine yourself in the future. Ask yourself, what will be your life after? What will you do with the trust that the past generations have placed in you. 
as our newly endowed chairs, as the elite members of this faculty, it's your responsibility to make sure that what existed long before you persists long after. So, now, before I turn the platform over to my good friend Peter May, the head of our Board of Trustees, and I know of no one who's been more effective as a, as a chairman of a board for Mount Sinai, let's give a round of applause to these accomplished clinicians and scientists. Peter. Thanks, Ken, and good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> it's my pleasure on behalf of the Board of Trustees to welcome all of you to our annual convocation ceremony. In this, the 50th anniversary of the Mount Sinai Icon School of Medicine. The founding of this school was, <clears throat> as I said, only 50 years ago, which seems like a long time, but in the life of a medical school and in terms of the accomplishments, it's really very, very short time. The school was started out of a garage around the corner. It actually was the home of a converted New York City bus facility. And today, 50 years later, I think we can be very proud of what Mount Sinai School of Medicine has become, as today it's the home of one of the nation's top medical schools. Not only are we training exceptionally bright and creative, innovative doctors, but we're also engaged in great medical research that generates new insights, diagnostics, and treatments. The School of Medicine's rapid ascent in stature, particularly in the past decade, is really a monumental achievement. Today, the Icon School of Medicine is one of the top-ranked medical schools in the country. Our NIH funding per investigator is in the top three. Nature Magazine recently ranked Mount Sinai as one of the 10 most innovative research organizations in the world. And Fast Company Magazine has named the Icon School as one of the world's 10 most innovative companies in big data. And last year, Mount Sinai's innovation partners, which translates our research findings into healthcare products serve and services, generated 211 patents, 144 new inventions, and 55 new licenses and options for use of Mount Sinai research. These achievements are elevating medical science as they strengthen the financial foundation of the Icon School of Medicine. And credit is due to the visionary leadership of our CEO, Dr. Kenneth Davis, who you just heard from, our Dean of the School of Medicine, D Dennis Charney, who you're gonna hear from shortly, and the hard work of our professors and researchers, the philanthropy support of our donors and our trustees, some of whom are here today. So it's now my pleasure to recognize a number of the gen generous donors who are funding a chair this year, and the esteemed faculty members who are receiving the honors of those endowed fellowships, pro professorships. I first like to acknowledge our trustees, Jean and Jim Crystal, who've endowed the Jean C. and James W. Crystal Professorship in Genetics and Genomic Sciences. Thanks to you, Jean, and your son, Jonathan, who I think is here with us today, and congratulations to Dr. Adam Margolin, who will hold that chair. Thank you also to Bonnie and Tom Tisch. We saw Tom limping in, in just, Tom Strauss, sorry. Uh, Bonnie and Tom Strauss, we saw Tom limping in a few minutes ago, having recently had surgery in our uh, great orthopedics department, and he's doing extremely well. And we wanna thank them for making possible the Bachman Strauss Professorship, um, and congratulations to Dr. Rachel Saunders Pullman, who assumes this chair. We also recognize the generosity of Mr. Pliny Jewell IV and, HPB, and the HPB Foundation for creating the Belinda Bingham Pierce and Gerald G. Pierce Distinguished Chair of Ophthalmology. And congratulations to Dr. Richard Rosen, who assumes this professorship. Our appreciation goes to the Greenwall Foundation, which has endowed the Anna A. Greenwall Chair in Geriatrics and Adult Development and congratulations to Dr. Kenneth Bukvar, who will hold this professorship. 
Thank you to our emeritus trustee and honorary chairman, Fred Klingenstein, and his wife, late wife, Sharon, and the entire Klingenstein family, including Amy and Ken Pollinger, who I believe are here today. The Klingenstein family has generously underwritten the Sharon and Frederick Klingenstein Dr. Nathan Case Professorship. And congratulations to Dr. Marta Fitziola, who will hold that chair. We're also grateful to the Lieb and Herman Merkin Foundation and the Merkin family for making possible the Herman Merkin Professorship in Palliative Care. And congratulations to Dr. Amy Kelly, who will assume that chair. And thank you to Trustee Emeritus Charles Brompton and his wife Rita, who've joined us today for endowing the chair, the Charles Brompton Chair in Personalized Medicine. And congratulations to Dr. Ruth Luce, who will hold that part, that professorship. We also, there are a lot of them today, but <laughs> we also acknowledge the generosity of the late Dr. Henry Stratton and his wife Lillian for funding the Lillian and Henry Stratton Professorship in Neuroscience. Congratulations to Paul Schlesinger, who will hold that chair. And I'd also like to congratulate our other esteemed professors who are honored today. Dr. Sharam Arkbakian, who will become the Mount Sinai Professor in, Psycho, in Psychiatric Epo, Epigenomics. I tried to rehearse that name and I couldn't <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> Epigenomics. Congratulations to Dr. Ethlyn Wang Jabs, who becomes the Mount Sinai Professor of Development Genetics, and Dr. Jing, Yan Jing, who will be the Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai Professor in Therapeutics Discovery. Also, Dr. Andrew Leibowitz will be the Mount Sinai Professor in Perioptive Care, and Dr. Eric Schatt, the Mount Sinai Professor in Predictive Health and Computational Biology. So congratulations to all of you and thank you so much to all of our donors. And I want to thank my colleagues on the Board of Trustees of the Mount Sinai Health System. Next year will mark my 30th year as a member of the board. And I've watched as this institution has taken its place as one of the foremost academic medical centers and great hospitals in the world. So thank you and congratulations to you all. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Dennis Charney, the Ann and Joel Ehrenkranz Dean of the Icon School of Medicine. Dennis. Let's give another round of applause for Peter May and his great leadership. <laughs> so we've never had more endowed chairs than, uh, than we are awarding uh, tonight, which I think you know, speaks for the health of our uh, medical school and our, our health system. It also means that we're going to be here for a while. 